everybody. Thank you for joining our online Synthetic Intelligence Forum session with uh, Dr. Simon C, who's the head of the AI Technology Center and AI Nation at uh, NVIDIA. Uh, my name is Vic, and I'm the uh, host of the Synthetic Intelligence Forum and very happy to have uh, such an uh, esteemed colleague from the industry join us. I've had the pleasure of uh, conversing with Dr. C one-on-one um, -on -one as well as uh, on email and have exchanged some excellent insights with him. And so I think it's a great opportunity for us to have uh, a specialist and expert in the field of his caliber and his stature, uh, uh, share his insights and share his knowledge with us. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, Professor C, Dr. C, a little bit before I invite him onto the stream. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. C is currently the head of the AI Technology Center and AI Nation at NVIDIA. He's also a professor at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University in China and the King Mong Kung Technical University in Thailand. Uh, Professor C is also the Chief Scientific Computing Advisor to BGI, and uh, the rest of his uh, credentials are far too voluminous for me to, uh, to, to, to list, but suffice it to say he's, uh, he's an expert in the field. He's a well-established industry expert. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, invite onto the stream uh, Dr. C. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Vic, uh, for having me here uh, to present to you and to share with you some of the works that we are doing. Um, Vic, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm very flattered. Um, but one of the things is that I must say is, is that uh, I'm not really the experts. Uh, um, it just happens that I have a chance to work on uh, some of these uh, interesting projects. Um, and um, and uh, I was very fortunate that I could uh, work with my distinguished uh, colleagues in the areas of artificial intelligence and uh, high performance computing. And, and so, I'd like to say, Dr. C, that you are a trained mathematician. I was commenting before the stream that we saw some partial differential equations on the whiteboard behind you. Maybe that can be the subject of a whole another stream with you someday in the future. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that uh, many uh, of us as a mathematician is that we get very excited when we see uh, equations. Um, and, um, and my wife is always complaining that uh, I think she said that I love the equation more than I love her. So Dr. C, without uh, further ado, on that note, I'll put your slides up with your permission and then we can get started. All right. Thank you very much. Take it away. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for having me here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I, what I would like to do is to share with you guys uh, what uh, NVIDIA are doing. Uh, as Vic has mentioned, I run the AI uh, Technology Centers, and yet I just want to give you a short introduction on what the uh, NVIDIA AI Technology Center is. Um, the AI Technology Centers, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, joint centers and joint lab across the world. Uh, as you could see the maps over here, uh, a lot of them has been in, in Asia. Uh, basically because one of the things that basically because the government and the universities are pursuing uh, NVIDIA's, uh, getting NVIDIA's to work together with them. At the same time, NVIDIA would also like to actually learn from the university's professors in uh, understanding uh, the progress and the new ideas and technologies from the universities. Uh, this is our strategic involvement. Uh, we dealt a lot with the higher education, with the government, and also in the industries. Uh, we set up uh, a research projects, uh, and I mean research projects, we really go deep into it. We have a lot of students, postdocs, interns that actually works together with us in our centers. These are the, some of the universities, a snapshot, uh, snapshot of some of the universities and agencies that work together with us. Uh, for those who are interested, uh, we can get more in the details in a subsequent call. Um, NVIDIA, uh, our tech centers involved in a couple, there is a lot of areas where uh, NVIDIA is focusing on. And in the tech centers itself, uh, these are some of the projects that we are working on. AI, high performance computing to experimental AI, including uh, a, a, a project which is a bit um, different from rest of NVIDIA is something what we call what we call QGate, which is a simulator for quantum computing. Uh, again, you know, uh, we we in the in the subsequent call or whatsoever uh, in the future, we can discuss more about uh, some of these uh, interesting topics. 
just a snapshot of some of the projects and and um, if we are interested we can go that back go into details um, but just wanted to give you an idea on some of the projects that we are all working on so with the, uh, so what we, I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a short little review on where are we now with AI and what NVIDIA are doing in the areas of artificial intelligence in terms of from the software stacks all the way to the uh, hardware uh, area. As you guys would know that the uh, in the area of artificial intelligence is basically consists of three pillars. One of them is the algorithms. And this requires a lot of talented uh, researcher people that actually to develop those uh, algorithms. The amount of data is just growing and now it's become pretty, pretty much available to us to actually process and make use of those data to, to train those algorithms. But very importantly also, uh, and this is to the core of NVIDIA, is that the computing resource it now has democratized that everyone almost everyone you know from those who owns a laptop uh, with uh, GPUs could, can actually do some form of machine learnings or deep learning uh, or, or artificial intelligence so to say so with all these three things now artificial intelligence become very very easy to use and very uh, pervasive over the last couple of years, AI has been uh, adopted everywhere. As you guys will see, these are some of the examples of where the uh, AI is being adopted. And I, when I use the words artificial intelligence, it basically means machine learning, deep learning, and what, whatsoever. I know that in the academic and, and from the academic world, uh, we, are, we are purists. We tend not to use the word AI. but you know, I'm going to use the word AI pretty much in general. One of the very um, important application of artificial intelligence is in the areas of um, healthcare and medical science. Um, early detections, uh, diagnosis uh, and uh, treatments. At the moment right now, with the imaging uh, technologies, medical imaging technologies, once allows to detect and able to uh, detect all these things, very, very easily and very, very uh, accurately. The, of course, we are not replacing uh, doctors or radiologists, but these tools allow one to actually detect, uh, help these uh, radiologists and doctors to become more efficient. The efficacies of detecting uh, all these uh, medical issues whatsoever become uh, higher. Hospitals has become smarter. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am not very familiar with the hospitals over in, uh, in Canada, but uh, because I go, I visit China and in Asia very, very frequently, other country in Asia very frequently, for example, like in Korea, Taiwan, whatsoever. Uh, smart hospital is now become a sort of a direction where most of the hospitals are going into. Uh, there are hospitals where they make use of all sorts of different type of technology from, um, from um, MRI scans to x-rays uh, to uh, surgeries and, and so forth. Because of the COVID-19 now, uh, the body temperature checkings is everything uh, is become very, very uh, pervasive. Uh, every single, and I was just talking to Vic just now, in Singapore itself, the hospital, uh, the, because of COVID-19, every agencies, every every uh, buildings has uh, some form of body temperature screening, uh, making sure that uh, making sure that uh, no one infected is get into the building. So because of that, uh, because of that, the technology right now is um, mature enough to be implemented. One of the things that NVIDIA has done was to actually to actually put all these things into a single platform. This is called the NVIDIA Clara Guardians, where it consists of, uh, if you could see over the, the green portion where, is, where the NVIDIA uh, technology is, this is part of, it. we have pre-trained models where we train 
um, all the, uh, for example, like all the different type of images for uh, tumors or for cancers whatsoever. We have three pre-trained models that is that that we can share with the hospital. Uh, they could use it uh, to transfer uh, and using the transfer learning toolkits to add, to train their new models for their particular uh, applications. We have deep streams, uh, which is for videos, and then we have other technologies like for example, Java's and whatsoever. But what, what I'm trying to, to say is that the technology right now is mature enough to be, imp to be uh, implemented and deployed into the hospital. And what NVIDIA is, put, is doing is to put all these things together as an SDK that connects to our, all the different type of NVIDIA hardware and then allow the hospital or the system integrator to build application on top of it. The, like I say again, you know, the Clara guidance is ready to deploy and uh, develop and deploy. So uh, we have pre-trained models that, uh, that together with the transfer learning uh, toolkits um, and, and the ones could actually do all the training and develop new models new uh, machine learning models and to be deployed for that particular type of application within the universities. We also have uh, natural language processing as many of the hospitals right now are uh, using some form of conventional AI so that they can actually use it to communicate with their, with their patients or as a tool the, for the nurse and the doctors to actually communicate with the machines. These are some of the applications I'm going to share with you. And this uh, being implemented, uh, uh, Deep Vision AI, uh, which is a uh, ISV, they are actually implemented uh, all in one human-based monitoring system. As we know, the COVID-19 has actually uh, accelerated this adoption of this technology. It could uh, massively uh, you know, um, detect, uh, monitor the temperatures of human in a, uh, in a massive scale. Another one is the Dalian Human Based Monitoring System. Again, you know, it's a one of them is a Enterprise Temperature Monitoring at scale. Again, this is being used in man, in some of these companies uh, where they use uh, um, combining with thermal ca uh, cameras and some form of conditioning platform. They could help to detect uh, temperature changes and whatsoever within the uh, companies. Like I said before, there are many other ho many hospitals. They have different type of IOTs and stuff like this. And, and so uh, again, working with one of the company called Whiteboard Coordinators, we have done um, a uh, implementations within the hospitals. Now, switching topics a little bit over here. Uh, one of the things that you guys would see is the in the areas of uh, product development and manufacturing. Now. Previously, when we want to design our products, it requires physical prototyping. Uh, and then um, and, uh, in the 90s itself, we, the virtual prototyping using computer simulations become very, very pervasive. And at the moment right now, we are moving into what we call the AI-based techniques that are using data-driven uh, neural networks uh, to do uh, the generations of ideas and also to simulate uh, some of these uh, products or physical phenomenon uh, in a much quicker, quicker way. Now, these are some of the examples. For example, this is a fluid dynamics uh, simulations. As you could see over here, as most of people uh, and, and know that when we do a, 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 a full uh, navial strokes simulation or uh, CFD, it requires a very huge computers and take a very long time to do, to do that. That is not very efficient. I mean, although it does not, it, do, it does uh, not require you to build a physical models uh, initially, allow you to do multiple simulation. But if you once want to do a, a few thousand simulation, that is very, very time consuming because each simulation could take uh, uh, days or even weeks or even months to do the simulation depends upon the complexities and depends upon the thing. So what they, what we have what people have done is to replace some of these models uh, and basically what we call surrogate models to allow one to replace some part of the CFD, especially the computational part with a uh, neural networks models that allow one to simulate very very quickly. 
Um, this is another examples of it where once do a bio tissue simulations, uh, again, you know, it's uh, using a surrogate models to replace some of the most uh, complex part of the simulation and then allows one to actually simulate it very, very uh, fast and uh, with uh, the right accuracy. So what, what, we, what we want to do is to, because the technology right now is mature enough, what we want to do is to uh, allow one to build all these models in a very, very slim, seamless way, right? And what NVIDIA has done is done something called SimNet, uh, which is basically what we call what it, what people will call physical informed neural network. And the architecture is based that the whole thing is basically is to allow ones to build uh, 3D geometry uh, using uh, point cloud uh, um, representations. Uh, we have uh, multi physics uh, networks that work together with the neural networks and. Underlying it is basically it's been connected to all the different type of uh, to the GPUs, uh, software, SDK architecture that make it totally transparent to the user so that they do not have to worry about all the different hardware. They just need to focus on uh, their problem at hand. Uh, at hand. Uh, what we have right now is that we, are, we, we have a multi-physics uh, partial differential equations uh, uh, coupled with the neural network you could train the neural neural networks, and then um, and we have some physics uh, together with it. Because one of the things is that remember that the, we have a lot of knowledge within the physics uh, community, and what we want to do is to couple the neural network together with the with the physics uh, knowledge that we have, and then that will give you a more accurate uh, solutions. This is the examples of it. Uh, if you could see uh, the the um, on your uh, left hand side this is where the predicted uh, result is and then you know uh, and the on the on the middle portion this is where the uh, ground truth is and you could see on your right hand side the graph this is where the difference and you could see that the difference is very very uh, little which means that the neural networks uh, together with the couple together with the physics uh, equations that give a very very accurate uh, results these are an, uh, another examples of it to show the accuracies of it. And uh, you know, we could discuss it further uh, if those who are interested in this. So what NVIDIA has done, what uh, NVIDIA has done was to put all these things together as a single uh, uh, SDK so that people could actually in fact develop um, neural networks uh, solver to solve their, new, uh, their, their partial differential equations for a particular type of problem. It could be fluid dynamics, it could be solid mechanics, uh, or uh, any types of problems that you can find in uh, computational science um, into this uh, platform. Now, let me switch topics a little bit. Uh, one of the things is that a uh, very important thing is the ability to generate artificial intelligence to generate new information or ideas. Uh, many of you may have already a very familiar something called the generative adversary uh, neural uh, network, which is basically is thing of it is that you have two competing network. One is a generator that generate out uh, uh, images. The other one, the discriminator, is telling telling the the uh, trying to identify whether the image is fake or, or uh, is whether is it real or, or unreal, right? And what it does is that uh, the generator will try its best to generate out image to fool the discriminator while the discriminator is trying its best to detect whether the image is real or unreal. And, and this thing will, and as we train the neural network, this thing will go on uh, between this thing and they will find some form of equilibrium. And once they reach the equilibrium, uh, then we can actually use the results for this. This is a, um, let me just go back to the slides again. Oh, sorry. So this is a, 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 a progressive uh, neural network is a, 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 a derivative of the uh, generative of a, adversary a neural network. What NVIDIA has done is that we train uh, the neural network with a move, celebrities, movie stars. Um, all sort of celebrities and, 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 what, and whatsoever. Now, oops. 
And what this thing is that this is that all the uh, fake, I would say that uh, uh, fake uh, celebrities that have been generated out by the uh, neural network. So these are not real celebrities. They are celebrities that are able to be generated by the neural network itself. This is another example of it. Uh, and uh, this is called Gu Gang, again, by our NVIDIA uh, uh, research teams. Uh, you could see that over here, uh, the, uh, the artists were then able to, to draw and automatically the system would then generate out the uh, necessary uh, images. So what it means is that now uh, as a uh, novice art artist, um, I could actually generate out different type of uh, pictures or, or images, very, very uh, effective and very, very re realistic. So this is just another examples of some of the work that we have done. Um, and you guys may, would have known that recently uh, this technology has been adopted very uh, aggressively and widely inside the uh, artist community. This piece of art was, be was being sold for, I believe was in terms of about US more than $200,000. And, and the, uh, the signature is basically a equations of a loss functions of a uh, generative uh, adversary network uh, loss functions. A, um, this is a examples that uh, used in uh, AI music where uh, AV, uh, AV uh, technologies as HFX uh, created the musics for NVIDIA. And let me see whether if this works. Oops. Oops, sorry about that. So it, seems, it doesn't seem that it works uh, very well. That might. Um, but if you guys click on the, 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 the YouTube itself, uh, you should able to see the music that is played by the, uh, uh, the AV uh, technology. And this is, this is fully generated by um, the artificial intelligence. Um, it can be used in many other in many applications, not just in the in the uh, artistic world. It's used in the uh, engineering world. This is uh, Dreamcatcher uh, in Autodesk, where they generate out uh, different type of designs. Instead of uh, engineers being only able to design one or a few of them, they use the, the computer to generate out a thousand and thousand of of designs, and then the engineers could then pick the designs to find which is the most optimum. Uh, for the uh, applications. Being used, the, this is also being used in many other places. For example, one of them is in the medical world where they use it to generate out, you know, uh, different types of molecules for drug discoveries, uh, for toxicity studies and, and so forth. Now, one of the very hot topics right now is what we call conventional uh, AI. And you guys will have known, uh, many of you will have owned a, uh, a, a mobile phone. You use either, you know, a series in Google, a series in Apple's or, or Google's and whatsoever. And, um, and, it's, and it, it, this technology is being uh, very hotly pursued by many different uh, companies from hospitals to, um, uh, to uh, telcos, to many other uh, industries. Now, um, this is basically because over the last couple of, uh, of years, uh, the NLP has progressed uh, tremendously. As you could see over here, these are some of the models that is being developed from BERT uh, all the way to Megatrons, whatsoever, that allow ones to develop a very, very sophisticated NLP um, uh, our technology. Just to show you the families of all the different types of uh, transformer, um, and um, you know, one of the things was that you know, a couple of years ago, in fact, one year uh, last year, uh, this was being published by uh, by OpenAI. Of course, they have they have actually shared this uh, GPT two already, but it was they actually hot the publications of it for a while saying that it was too dangerous to be shared. 
Uh, but later on, they found that they can actually share a smaller model. And recently, if you guys have, have uh, seen the news, GPT-3 is being released, released and uh, the Garden News uh, actually read, written an article about it, uh, saying that you know some of these uh, uh, articles that is written by uh, Guardian is being generated by GPT-3. So the technology has really, really uh, allowed one to actually create a lot of new things and ideas. So what we want to do is to how then we're able to build a, a, a entire pipeline so that one could actually develop a conventional AI very, very easily from audios all the ways to a uh, going through the ASR, the automatic speech recognitions and, and all the way to N, uh, ANU from uh, machine translation, query search, you know, search rankings and, and, and so forth. Right. So one, one of the things that we, what NVIDIA has done was to build something called Jarvis. And Jarvis basically is a platform that allow one to do end-to-end uh, multi-model composition services, right? Uh, and uh, you, what you do is that you, there is a toolkit where you transfer learning uh, and we have pre-built models uh, that once you could actually use it and then retrain it for their own uh, applications, our own dialects or, 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 uh, or own languages. Uh, inside there, there is a chatbot in, that's only not just the uh, NLP, not just the speech recognition, but also uh, for gesture recognition using computer visions and, and so forth. Um, there are pre-trained models, like I said before, uh, there's a lot of ones to train it uh, and, and you could uh, do it. Uh, it's something called what we call MIMO, it's, uh, MIMO which allow ones to do, we already have pre-trained models and you could retrain it to do many other things. Right, so that you can cut down your your, your training time, uh, be optimized for conventional AI service, uh, and all these things are being deployed in what we in Nvidia call the N, uh, in the our uh, NCG. The other thing is the recommendation systems. Uh, you guys will be using you know a lot of eBay's. Um, you know because of the COVID itself, I've been using e shoppings all the time and whatsoever, and you. And you know that uh, all these uh, companies actually recommend to you some form of products uh, one way or another. Again, you know, the technology right now is very, very, very uh, uh, mature enough to be implemented. Um, and uh, what NVIDIA uh, is doing again is to build a platform called the uh, NVIDIA Merlin, uh, uh, which is actually to put all these things together uh, using our technology uh, and again, you know, one of the things that I didn't have time because of the lack of time, I, didn't, I wouldn't have time to go into detail, something called Rapid. Rapid is a platform where we have uh, all, uh, well, I wouldn't say all, but very compute intensive uh, machine learning algorithms and we optimize it uh, on the GPUs uh, and allow one and create the API for people to write on top of it to develop their own application. What we, what Nvidia, right? What we have done right now is to put all these things together into a single platform, so that ones could develop uh, deep learning uh, recommendation applications, uh, and they can develop this and deploy this in a very, very uh, quick time. Um, and you guys will have known uh, that Nvidia is is working a lot in the um, in the autonomous uh, vehicles areas. Uh, recently, you guys will have um, many of you will have heard about you know our collaboration with uh, Mercedes uh, Diamond Chrysler on the Mercedes vans, uh, Audis, uh, Volkswagens, Toyotas, and and so forth. What Nvidia has, is is doing right now is to build the frameworks uh, so that and also the hardware so that people so that this company can actually uh, easily deploy them onto their platform. At the end of it, you know, these are just two kits. Uh, one will have to develop and customize according to their needs. And these are the examples. And uh, let me see, is this playing? Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have um, developed uh, a proof of concept on uh, co-pilot, you know, hit trackings. Uh, technologies that allow ones to actually track 
Um, this is very useful, especially, you know, we are talking about this for the guys when we look at, we, when we see some pretty girls, we tend to get distracted and this machine will help us to prevent us from getting into accidents, right? So what is the computational issues behind this? And this dive down to the uh, NVIDIA core technology. You guys, would, uh, many of you will have known that um, eight years ago, the, when machine learning was, uh, uh, neural network came out, uh, 10 layer neural networks uh, with 1 billion parameters uh, require roughly about 30 GPU days or 30 hexaflops to actually run this application. So computationally, it's very, very uh, expensive. The explosions of network right now is, it's just uh, mind boggling, right? Um, not just convolution neural network that we have seen, we have seen recurrent neural network, the, the generative adversary network that you guys would have, would, uh, many of you, we have just presented earlier, uh, the reinforcement learning used in robotics and so forth has been uh, used uh, and they are very computation intensive and, and, and so forth. These are examples of it, uh, of an, uh, what we call neural architecture search and creation. What these this things, uh, what this uh, algorithm do is to find the most optimum uh, parameters, uh, hyperparameters for a particular set of neural, neural network. Uh, basically is to find the best neural network for uh, that particular application and so forth. In these examples, it takes about 1,800 GPU days uh, by the way, this, this thing was done about uh, a, a year and a half ago. Uh, so just to take, get the context right, uh, the new technology is much better. But just to give you an idea on how much compute is required, I just want to show it to you. This NestNet, which takes about 1,800 GPU days or roughly about five years on one GPU to learn about the architecture. There are new one things that Embernet and there are many other new differential uh, new research uh, technology that is already uh, come out. But again, they are computationally intensive. As you guys would know, the significance of the AI compute is growing. Um, and uh, this is just a chart about where the computational requirement is going. Um, in, in recently, you know, with Alpha, Alpha Go Zero, and in fact, I do not have a chance to put on top of it, is where uh, BERT, and uh, GPT trees and, and so forth, they are in the petaflops scales, right? Basically you need machines that able, that able to compute that, uh, with huge capacity and compute very, very quickly to do the necessary training so that it can be, so that it can uh, achieve a, a required accuracy for that particular applications. So the challenges from big and small is not just about the uh, training part of it, but also with the deployment part of it. How do we then able to deploy them onto the space? The amount of data has also been growing tremendously. It's good that uh, that the, the data is growing, which means that we have more accurate, uh, accurate models, but at the same time, the computational requirement is getting uh, larger and larger. Just in the short period of, of uh, five years, uh, from 2016 to 2021, uh, you could see that the models from a ResNet all the way to a Megatron bird, uh, which is released last year, not even this year, was released last year, is almost 3,000 times much larger and require more computational power. So what NVIDIA is, is, is doing? Just to yeah, give you a brief history on what uh, looking at the algorithms. Again, you know, uh, I'm going to do this in a, try to do this in a very condensed manner. For those who are interested, uh, we could actually go, di uh, go deeper into this, but we could do this in subsequent uh, call. But if you look at the, that the uh, examples of uh, most of the machine learnings and deep learning algorithms itself, it is the basic fundamental part of it is a matrix matrix computation or matrix vectors computations, right? Uh, in a convolution ne neural network or whether is it a recurrent neural network, if you pack it properly, you could actually uh, construct it into a vectors, uh, matrix vectors computation or uh, vectors vectors 
uh, matrix vectors uh, computation. So this fits into the GPU extremely well. In the, uh, if you guys you could remember uh, when NVIDIA uh, moved move towards a general programmable uh, GPUs uh, or called the GP GPU in the early days, uh, in the um, 20, uh, uh, I think uh, 2009, um, where the first release of the uh, GF100, basically, if you look at it, uh, if you look at the graph over, over here, it is it outperformed uh, the CPU in a very, very um, large scale. Uh, the number of gigaflops that's able to produce, uh, to be churned out by a, a general purpose GP GPU is much uh, higher than a traditional uh, CPU. That is basically, that again, I'm not saying that the CPU is no good. The CPU has its own purpose and is good for many other things, but for a matrix, matrix computation or anything that deal with matrix computation, the GPUs perform extremely well. And this is demonstrated in many, uh, many of these things. I just want to, to, to give you an idea on, on this. Uh, and one of the things that we also uh, uh, notice is that the cost of computation. Now, if we do a 8-bit computation versus a 64-bit computation, uh, the amount of power that is needed is uh, tremendous, right? Uh, on the 8-bit, it require it require 8-bit add is uh, less than uh, 0.3 picojoules, and if you do a uh, a 32 bit uh, a floating point S is 0 0.9 picojoule, which this is almost like you know um, 30 times uh, more energy required to do the same. Com uh, well, I wouldn't say the same computation, but um, the same type of computation, but working on a different uh, bits uh, uh, accuracy levels. So, so this is extremely important. Uh, and we find one of the things is that we find that in deep learning, uh, you, you do not need to have such a high precision uh, in, the, in some of these um, computation, as you can see over the graph here, the, we could achieve the same form of accuracy by uh, even by using less uh, precision. So the eight bits, and now we see that there's some of this thing, even by at the four bits level, we're able to achieve the same level of accuracy um, and so forth. So what NVIDIA has done is that we actually implemented something called the tensor core, right? Uh, where we uh, where we do a 16 bits by 16 bit computation uh, plus a 16 bit or 32 bit computation and able to do the whole thing in one cycle. This actual fact was the first uh, product that was come out was actually the V100 that's allowed this, uh, that we are uh, allowed to do this. Uh, it has 5,000 over CUDA core, but it has only has about 600 over of this uh, tensor core, which allow which you can actually compute all these things in one cycle. So think of it is that you could do 600 over of this tensor core uh, uh, in in basically in one uh, simple uh, cycle. The performance of the V100 again, you know, uh, 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 this graph is just to show you the performance of it uh, on half precision. You can see on the green line. On a, on a single precision and a double precision. So if we could do on a 16 bits, basically is that means that we could achieve very high performance and able to provide that the accuracy, it, it, we can achieve the uh, right accuracy, we can actually in fact uh, quicken the, uh, the deep training very, 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 very quick, fast. This is just a couple of, of slides. And again, I do not want to go on it too much, just to show you the, uh, the tensor core. Uh, using making use of the tensor core to improve the performance against the previous generations of nvidia uh, technology without the tensor core so it's almost nine times or uh, much faster uh, and on the true real applications on a resnet uh, 50 is about two and a half times uh, uh, faster right so because of that we continue on to push on from a 16 bits to eight bits and we have four bits uh, on, on on it and again, you know, because of that, we are able to achieve uh, much uh, faster, uh, a better performance and faster uh, applications uh, for uh, using such a lower precision 
types of application. Again, you know, I just wanted to show you a, a ResNet inference uh, engine uh, on a T4, which is using the uh, in, uh, integer 8 bits. Uh, it can, uh, is about 58 times much faster than a normal uh, CPU. So recently, you guys may have heard uh, that the NVIDIA released the A100. Uh, and this is basically the uh, Ampere architecture, which you hear about uh, all the new uh, products from the A100s to the uh, RTX uh, 3000s and, and so forth. NVIDIA, what NVIDIA does is that we build one single architecture uh, called the Ampere. And the Ampere is being, I mean, uh, it uh, is then adapted to different type of application. It could be in graphics, in, for example, in the Quadro, in the RTX, uh, in the um, in the gaming uh, uh, cards. Uh, we also uh, the same with the same architecture. We also apply it into the um, in the deep learning uh, our data centers uh, system. This allows us to scale out our production very very quickly and inexpensively. But very importantly, also is that I want to share with you is that there's still find new features inside there. One of them is that there's new tensor core. I'm going to explain it a bit more um, late, uh, later on. There's also something what we call the new sparsity uh, acceleration and the uh, mostly instance uh, GPU. Right. Uh, so remember earlier when I say we have the tensor core, it basically is a, is a 16, 16, uh, it's a four by four, 16 um, floating point uh, accuracy uh, only. Now in NVIDIA, in, in the A100, we have also the uh, uh, 32 cores and also the six, 64, uh, six, 32 bits and also the 64 bits. Within the 32 bits itself, they have different formats. You can actually do the tensor floats, the uh, tensor floats, uh, you can have the tensor float 32. You can also use it for uh, do uh, B floats uh, 16 or FP uh, float 16. So again, you know, one of the things is that it depends upon the type of applications and the types of accuracy you want. You could actually represent them in a very, very different uh, formats. Um, the other things I uh, want to mention about is that many of the neural networks, uh, after the trainings, you find that the neural network itself is very sparse. Although uh, initially it started off with pretty dense because we, we randomized it uh, in the initial condition, but uh, after the training, we find that the neural network is pretty sparse. And many of these, as you, as many of you will know, when you do a sparse uh, computation, a lot of the if you use a traditional uh, algorithm to do the uh, the computation for a sparse network, uh, is very very wasteful. So what what uh, what we have done is that in the A100 we are able to transform it into a sparse matrix and then run it on a tensor core, which allow it to actually run much faster. In some cases, to be two times uh, much more faster than a non-sparse uh, uh, matrix. So just to show you the the uh, the examples of it, and this is the performance of it. Again, you know. Uh, it depends upon the application, but this is for a bird large uh, training and also for uh, inference, it shows the uh, huge performance uh, improve, improvement. And 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 uh, and again, you know, this is another of this. Um, also, the other things is that we have the FP32. So we have FP, sorry, FP64. So there is also a FP64 um, a tensor core right now. Remember that in earlier part, in the early part of our days, we only have 16 bits tensor core. Now we also we have 32, and we also have 64 bits tensor core. So, um, so with that, uh, we are able to improve the performance uh, quite tremendously, even for 64 bits uh, applications. Now, um, one of the things is that. It is not just train training uh, uh, or deep learning within one uh, GPUs. What we need to do is to actually build a, a systems that allow multiple GPUs to actually work together and how to actually scale up the deep learning. As you guys, many of you will know that for large models, there are a couple of models and, and, and the people are proposing uh, even new models. 
One of them is basically trained on data parallel training, or you could actually do uh, model training. But what this, uh, both of these require a lot of data movement. Uh, and so one of the things that NVIDIA has done, uh, instead of using just PCIe, a previous version of NVIDIA, it uses only PCIe to communicate within the, the GPUs. What NVIDIA has done was that uh, in our uh, earlier versions, uh, in the V100, we start to implement what we call NVLink. This is a special link uh, that is, uh, is to connect the GPUs to GPU that allow uh, communication in a very quick way, a high bandwidth and also low latency. And this is, again, no, this is just a uh, earlier versions of our uh, MB link, uh, just to want to sh uh, share with you. And is of course, it proved that, you know, it does have perform a huge performance uh, imp improvement. Uh, and what we want to do is also to scale up even larger because the, the, the MB links allow only one to scale up to eight GPUs. And in order for us to scale up even larger, what we have built was what we call the MB switch. That's uh, allowed ones to actually connect all the different type of GPUs, uh, so not, not different type of GPUs, but more GPUs uh, uh, together. That actually was implemented in our uh, machine called the DGX2, right? So the, this is uh, just the MV switch and, and uh, due to the lack of time, I'm just going to go through this uh, very, very quickly. Just want to show to you the performance of it in terms of some of these uh, application uh, in the in language processing uh, is versus what is uh, 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 CP, uh, uh, PCIe uh, based type of system. It has uh, shown a lot of uh, great improve, uh, improvement. In our in our new things, we have uh, the uh, MV links uh, version trees, and uh, again, you know, just to just just a demonstration of it uh, is again, you know, it has demonstrated that it has a performance advantage over the PCI PCIe. All right. Now, um, what if we want to scale up to even larger, thousand and thousand of of GPUs? Uh, so one of the things that many of the company use is basically start to use uh, is to use the uh, infinite band um, architectures uh, or network. Um, for example, this is ABCI in Japan where they scale up to a thousand over, uh, there's a thousand over nodes where they have 4,000 over GPUs. Uh, they are fully connected to using the uh, Mellanox uh, infinite bands. And what NVIDIA has done was that in about, uh, to, uh, about uh, was it last year? Uh, and we complete our merger uh, completion th uh, this year uh, is to, we actually merge together with uh, Mellanox. Mellanox now is part of NVIDIA. So right now, NVIDIA is doing an end-to-end -end, uh, type of things where we're able to build the GPUs, the servers, and also uh, the network, right? So this is some of the world records that have been achieved by MBCI. As you could see that you know, with the right networks and whatsoever, uh, a, um, and, and again, this is based on the old uh, architecture that you could see that the, uh, from uh, 29 hours on the same models all the way now to 20, uh, 224 seconds on this particular type of uh, systems. Right, now, uh, so in order to support internally uh, our research, this is the machine that we are using. So for those of, for those of you or whoever who is working with NVIDIA, uh, we will have access to this machine. We actually built this machine for our internal, uh, internal research uh, to support our thousands of researchers. Uh, it consists of roughly at the moment right now, is uh, 2000 over GPU. We have another machine, which is, uh, uh, which is called the uh, Saturn, uh, Saturn uh, which is uh, uh, again uh, at the, in the range of uh, 10,000 GPUs that's running on this. So we have built this machine to support our internal uh, research. And one of the very nice thing was that we actually built this machine in less than a month. Right. Uh, switching topics uh, a little bit, uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, one of the things that uh, is not just the hardware itself, 
but uh, the software, this is the, the, the very important things to NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA invested a lot into this, is the CUDA, uh, CUDA uh, uh, layers. Uh, it's now called CUDA 11, uh, as you can see over here. Um, and it support many different things from MIG, tensor calls. Uh, we have support in ARMS. Uh, the, and there is a, what we call cooperative group, uh, different programming models. Um, we have developed a whole set of toolkits. And then, of course, all the different libraries in, uh, for example, like uh, FFT, Kublas, and many, many other uh, libraries in, in, in it. Also, the other things is that you have decoders uh, for uh, MVJPEG uh, and many uh, other uh, kind of, of stuff. Right. I uh, just want to sh uh, show you some of the, uh, the tools. Over here, these are the tools that is being developed uh, and uh, once we actually use it, the MV site and the compute uh, synthesizers and, and so forth. Just to quickly uh, uh, wrap it up uh, so that we can have a bit of answering questions. We also have now the entire CUDA running on ARMS um, because ARMS is a very important uh, part of NVIDIA ecosystems. Uh, we are now already developing on ARMS. Uh, many of our uh, collaborators are already experimenting. Uh, both in the areas of computational science and in the areas of uh, deep learning. And it's supported on uh, multiple flat platforms. So with that, uh, I end my presentation so that we have time uh, for any discussion. I have a lot of slides over here. So if you want to have uh, some discussion over certain things, we can go down into more, uh, you can go down deeper into it. So Vic, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Simon. That was a great presentation. It was like a Christmas wish list because you covered everything from A100 to CUDA to RAPIDS to uh, pretty much a lot of other interesting details. And we'd definitely like to invite you back to have a more uh, fulsome conversation about RAPIDS. But one question I want to ask you, and there's a few questions in the chat, which I'll put on the screen as well. I have lots of questions myself, but one question I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you mentioned the breakthrough performance advantages when you go from a CPU to a GPU, but also, uh, Simon, there's been this architecture called the TPU, the tensor processing unit or the vector processing unit. So uh, can you comment a little bit on where that fits within the NVIDIA strategy uh, and whether it's really kind of a similar kind of jump from a CPU to GPU and then GPU to TPU. What's the pros and cons of a TPU vis-a-vis -vis GPU in the machine learning context? Uh, uh, Vic, sorry, sorry, uh, the, the DPU? Uh, the tensor processing unit or the vector processing unit. Oh. I know some cloud vendors are offering that as well. Uh, okay, so the, so the, the, um, the, um, the Google's uh, tensor processing unit is, uh, well, the, the concept is, is uh, um, uh, well, it's a bit different from the NVIDIA uh, Tensor Core, uh, um, Tensor Core. What we, what, what NVIDIA is, is, is doing is that we see, uh, we see that all, as long as the problem can be cast into a, um, a very structured manner. For example, one example is a matrix matrix computation. If we can cast it and structure it in such a way, um, our tensor core, um, and it's different from the tensor core in, in, in Google's. So uh, let's not try and make sure that we do not actually affect uh, are mistaken for that. The tensor core, um, uh, the tensor core uh, in NVIDIA is basically is a, a, a unit that allow one to do a, a matrix to matrix computation, a four by four matrix computation, all in one cycle, right? So it's implemented in all our GPU right now. Uh, all you all once need to do is to cast it in the right way, uh, right? Your problem in the in 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 the right way. If you if you could put it into a in your matrix um uh, manner and call the API, automatically the API would then run it on the GPU, uh, seamlessly. Right. So going forward, we are going to uh, improve the performance of the uh, tensor core 
uh, processing on our uh, our GPUs. Does that answer your question? Yes, definitely, Simon. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a quick uh, question here. I put it on the screen here. So there's a question saying, given the advancements and maturity of deep learning, what role can non-technologists play to mobilize the mass adoption of some of the health technologies you mentioned earlier in your presentation? Uh, let me try to understand the question. Uh, the question is how the... So non-technologists, Simon, so not necessarily people who are specialists in the field, uh, how can they help uh, to maybe, you know, help this technology to be spread more, more openly? Oh, how to spread this more openly? Um, the, I think the, the, the um, to me, uh, is to uh, educate the, uh, to, to learn more about the, the technology, what is limitation and what uh, and what it can do. Because one of the things is very challenging in the uh, in AI uh, is because uh, we tend to, uh, to overhype this technology. The technology is mature enough to be implemented, but it cannot do everything. And uh, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people who overhype to say that uh, AI can do a lot of things. So very important thing is to learn what it can do, what it cannot, what it cannot do, and then able then to educate the rest of the world to say, to tell them that, you no, know, these are the things that it can, uh, what it can, it can do and, and not to overpromise uh, the, the, the technology. The technology, it, we are still improving it. There's a lot of research going on, but it has its limitations. Okay, thank you, uh, Simon. There's another question here, uh, which is, uh, given the NASNet approach you mentioned, do you expect the job market for AI developers to disappear, le leaving the need for only AI researchers and domain experts with most tech decisions being automated with a solution like NASNet? Uh, no, I, 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 do, I do not think so. Uh, I think it will be, uh, 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 this thing is, challenge, uh, is, is changing very fast. Um, we are building, uh, when I say we, I, I mean the, the AI communities, um, are building tools that is making the uh, AI tools uh, even more easier to use and transparent. So the thing of it is that now, instead of you being a AI uh, developers, you are using the AI tools to help you in your domain areas. Just to give you examples, if I were to design a, let's say, a, a, a telecom antennas, all right, uh, for the 5G, uh, I, my domain experts is in the, uh, no, I, uh, in, in the 5G areas, but I would like to use some of the new techniques that are developed by the AI. And there are new, now new uh, API, new tools and whatsoever. I could easily use it I do not need to know about uh, artificial intelligence. I need to know the limitation of these algorithms, but I do not need to know the details of these algorithms. And I, all I need is to now is to able to implement these algorithms into uh, my particular domain. So I think that I think for 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 people in their different domains, uh, the the key thing is to learn about these new things and how to apply them into their uh, area of works. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Simon. There's another question here. So uh, somebody is commenting, they read that NVIDIA will supply hardware for Leonardo or 10 exaflop supercomputer. Does it use the integrated A100 models? Oh, that, that is, that, uh, that I'm not that sure. I need to ask the, um, the salespeople over in, in, in that, but I believe that it, it is. Okay. I, I, but I, I wasn't able to confirm that. I need to check with the, uh, with the salespeople. So one question I can ask uh, Simon again, uh, just if I can have the mic back is, uh, you know, when we look at NVIDIA, what's fascinating is you have the silicon. So everything from whether you look at the 3000 range, the new range, versus you look at Ampere and A100, then you look at those low level libraries like CUDA and CUDNN. And then we look at these uh, types of, um, you know, RAPIDS, which is an end-to-end -end data science pipeline that you said that avoids that IO penalty going from CPU to GPU and so mm. on and so forth through PCIe. And then uh, you talked also about some of the even higher level abstract, higher level libraries for NLP and conversational agents. So I guess one question I have is uh, given that NVIDIA is so diverse and they have such a, 
a varied ensemble of these solutions how much do different teams in nvidia talk to each other so how much does the hardware team inform the software team and the software team inform the cuda team uh, how integrated is the company in its kind of strategic uh, road mapping of its solutions oh is uh is uh we are we are very uh integrated in fact uh we we talk to one another very very often um the um so the uh we we the we have a core design. Basically, inside the company is basically is a is a core design. The way that, for example, uh, the uh, the Tensor Core uh, was designed because the deep learning guy was uh, experimenting with uh, quantization, uh, low lower precisions, uh, uh, a type of uh, computations. And what they found out is that they found that you know for such things, the actual fact um, they able to achieve the same accuracy to uh, even with lower precision. And so what this thing was being feedback to the, to the um, hardware design team and saying that, well, if you could reduce uh, if, uh, the, the, the precision, if you could build something that is uh, low precision and yet compute very fast, that could reduce the amount of energy and then helps in, in terms of the computation. So we do uh, uh, talk to one another very often of course, it's not perfect. It's not nothing is ever ever perfect, but we do actually communicate with one another uh, a, a lot. Thank you, Simon. And I'll ask the last question. You've been very generous with your time. I'd like to ask the last question, which is that. Uh, so when we look at a number of these uh, cloud providers, they have this uh, notion where you go and you can use a credit card or something and spin up a cloud instance. But the NVIDIA GPU cloud is a bit different. It's not really a cloud in the sense that you don't spin up an instance of NVIDIA hardware and so on and so forth. It's almost more like a hub where you download yeah. pre-packaged AI solutions which are optimized for NVIDIA. Uh, are there any plans to actually have an NVIDIA hub itself where we can go and spin up, uh, spin up cloud instances running NVIDIA GPUs? Um, at the at the at the at the moment right now, uh, uh, at the moment right now, we do not have internally. Of course, internally we have, but th this is not exposed to the to to external. Um, uh, we work together with our partners a lot, uh, AWS, you know, Google's, uh, Azure's, and 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 whatsoever. And what we what Nvidia and what uh, our uh, deployment team is is doing is that we built this. Uh, as you I mentioned, the the, the 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 cloud repository. So it's a repository where we all our image uh, the uh, package images are sitting down there. We partners with all all these cloud providers so that they can actually fact. So anyone user who are uh, customers of all these things can actually uh, download these uh, images and put it onto this cloud and run it uh, uh, almost uh, instantaneously and almost uh, seamlessly. Um, at the moment right now, we have no plans to actually open up our internal clouds, uh, so to say, uh, but you know, you never know what's going into the future. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. It was great to speak with you today. I know uh, you've uh, shared a number of very exciting developments coming from NVIDIA, and we'd love to have you back and dive a bit deeper into uh, Rapids and CUDA in, uh, in, a, in a future session whenever your time permits. But thank you very much, and thanks to everybody for joining. We'll have the next uh, broadcast in two weeks. Thank you so right. much. Thank you, Vic. Thanks, everyone, for having me, and I'm looking forward to it.